Whatever happened to that net super team? You know, the one with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving from a few years ago. I mean, in 2021, the New York Times called the Nets, quote, arguably the most talented team in basketball history. At one point in time, they had a trio of James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant, a threesome that has combined for three NBA titles, two league MVPs, 12 first team all NBA selections, and 32 all-star appearances. Yet the early 2020s Nets go down in history as one of if not the all-time failures of a super team. Right there with the late 90s Rockets, the 04 Lakers, and the 2013 Lakers. So what happened? Before we start talking about this, it cannot go overstated just how beset by injuries the Nets were, especially to their core. KD was obviously coming off an Achilles injury, but he also dealt with COVID, a hamstring injury, an MCL injury, ankle injuries, and what have you. Harden also dealt with a bad hammy during his tenure with the team, and Kyrie missed time with a bum shoulder, a hurt ankle, and other stuff. With many of those injuries and other situations we'll get into later overlapping with each other, the big three only ended up playing in 16 games together. So with all of that out of the way, let's talk about all the dysfunction and decisions that led to the Brooklyn Nets downfall. I think it's well worth talking about the circumstances that surrounded these guys when they came to the Nets. For starters, Durant came to Brooklyn after he kind of wore out his welcome with the Warriors, with his infamous argument with Draymond and the not so secret whispers that he wanted to leave the Bay and play in New York. Kyrie came to the Nets after really wearing out his welcome in Boston. I plan on resigning here next year oh! and by the time Harden was traded he would gained a noticeable amount of weight and had begun publicly putting down his Rockets teammates which is not good enough None of the key players on the Nets showed up with good mojo on their side, which was, in a way, par for the course for these guys. You wouldn't exactly call any of them locker room stabilizers. When KD and Kyrie joined forces to kick all of this off, people were immediately raising their eyebrows and looking around at each other like, oh, wow, how are they going to mess this up? And it started almost immediately when they got Kenny Atkinson fired less than a year into the experiment. And when I say got him fired, I don't mean a player went up to the owner, Joe Sy, and and demanded explicitly that the coach be fired. That happens later. But Atkinson inherited a dumpster fire when he became the head coach in 2017, with the franchise still reeling from the last time they haphazardly threw together talent for a super team. And Atkinson killed it. The Nets improved on their record year after year and even made the playoffs in 2019 with a roster mostly made up of non-lottery young guys, bargain bin vets, and only a single 20 point per game scorer, a reinvented D'Angelo Russell. And even in 2020, with KD sidelined the whole year and Kyrie missing most of the season with an injury, without D'Lo or many of the other pieces that had been key to the net success the year prior, Brooklyn was still in playoff contention. None of it mattered, though. Atkinson had failed to connect with three key veteran players, newcomers DeAndre Jordan, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. Atkinson resigned in March of 2020, less than a week before the league was put on pause. But hey, things like that have happened before. The coaching thing, not the world coming to a screeching halt thing. David Blatt kind of got jobbed with the Cavs when LeBron went back, and they went on to win the title. So after the bubble, the Nets went out and got KD's guy, Steve Nash. Besides being a revolutionary offensive player and two-time league MVP in his own right, Nash and KD had gotten close in Golden State while Nash was a consultant with the Warriors. And for the 2021 season, the Nets were pretty good. KD eased himself back into the groove after his injury, Kyrie was great and finished with 50-40-90 splits, and shoot, they went and got frickin' James Harden. This was before the vaccine, remember, and they were playing in essentially empty gyms, but the Nets finished with the second best record in the East and almost knocked off the Bucks in the second round. Had it not been for limiting injuries to Kyrie and Harden in the playoffs and Durant size 18 feet, those Nets might have gone all the way. They didn't, though, and that's when things really started to come apart. Less than a week before the 2022 season started, it was announced that because of New York City's COVID vaccine mandate, Kyrie Irving wouldn't be eligible to play or practice in New York because of his decision not to be vaccinated. He missed nearly the entire first half of the season as the rest of the team tried to pick up the slack without him. It wasn't until January that the team, basically out of pure desperation as injuries and workloads piled up, started playing him in road games. As the Nets were trying to figure out what life looked like 
like in a starting to be post COVID world, one of their marquee players, one of the keys to their team couldn't play in their home games. And you know, that's his decision and his right, but still it made things a little weird around the office, shall we say? So weird in fact that James Harden reached into his bag and pulled out a classic. He requested to be traded. He didn't do it publicly, but those of us studied in the arts of Harden saw the signs, telltale inconsistency, a lack of effort, and a general air of dissatisfaction only 13 months after joining the team. He saw the signs. Steve Nash was essentially powerless in the locker room. Kyrie actually once said that he didn't really see the Nets as having a head coach, and Durant's never really been one to take charge and straighten out a team. And how could he, with a limited roster playing monster minutes, while their point guard inserts himself right into the middle of a culture war? As Harden later put it, I didn't ask to leave for no reason. In February of 2022, the Nets traded Harden to the Sixers for a return package headlined by Ben Simmons. The very same Ben Simmons who had recently become the most heavily fined player in the history of the NBA because of his refusal to play for Philly. The same Ben Simmons who would not play a game for the Nets in the 2022 season. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. Unsurprisingly, the Nets were pretty uninspired down the stretch and were swept in the first round by the Celtics. In June, Kevin Durant asked for a trade because, you know, his co-star just spent an entire NBA season warring with the general public and the medical community over the global health issue of our age and a roster that is only comprised of guys who range from good to Ben Simmons. A month later, after not being traded, reports came out that Durant went directly to Joe Tsai and plainly stated that the only way he would remain with Brooklyn was under the condition that GM Sean Marks and Steve Nash were both fired. Yeah, the head coach that Durant practically handpicked. But wait! A few weeks later, Durant reportedly rescinded his trade request after meeting with Cy, Marks, and Nash together to squash any beef. So all is well, right? It'll be smooth sailing. The best player and the front office are all aligned. They're lockstep in their vision and oh, Steve Nash was fired seven games into the season. Cool. Well, uh, I hope that Kyrie's figured his stuff out. NBA star Kyrie Irving of the Brooklyn Nets shared a link last week on social media to a 2018 film that's been described as anti-Semitic. Another human being. I can what? post whatever I want, so say that and shut it down and move on to the next question. This is the part of the video where we're transcending basketball issues and getting into just common human decency. Like, yeah, Durant's the best player and he bears a lot of the blame for the coaching decisions, for hitching his wagon to Kyrie and Harden, and for the weird trade request demand that wasn't a demand that still got Steve Nash fired and all that. But at this point, this isn't about basketball. It's not even so much that Kyrie promoted this anti-Semitic film on Twitter. It's the fact that he failed at every opportunity to apologize. He never had the self-awareness or took the time of self-reflection to see that what he was doing was wrong and in fact defended himself by doubling down on how enlightened and self-aware he was. I'm a light. I'm a beacon of light. That's what I'm here to do. When he finally did deliver what was supposed to be an apology, it was so inauthentic and forced that the ADL refused his $500,000 donation. Only when he was suspended from the Nets for eight games did he finally make anything resembling an actual apology. In other words, only when Kyrie Irving's employers finally stepped in and suspended him from his job for over two weeks because he was, quote, unfit to be associated with the Brooklyn Nets, did he finally, quote, quote unquote, apologize. You can't say that this Kyrie debacle is the reason the Nets failed. I mean, they weren't exactly killing it before. Remember, things were wacky enough that Harden wanted out before all of this happened. But man, if you think Travis Kelsey dating Taylor Swift is a distraction, I don't know what in the world you call this. You don't need to be a mystic to read the tea leaves on what happened next. The team continued to be only halfway decent, up to the deadline, when the Nets finally pulled the plug on their failed experiment. Kyrie was traded to the Mavericks on a Monday, and Durant was sent to the Suns on Thursday. Just like that, it was over. The Nets' attempt at a super team had crashed and burned like a fast and furious pyrotechnic. Now, Brooklyn is back to rebuilding. Rebuilding around what, exactly? It's hard to say. And the stars of the most talented basketball team ever are all back out there for 
forging ahead, trying to forget that all this ever happened. Another cautionary tale in the long line of teams that tried to stack the deck. If you listen to the big three talk about their experience in Brooklyn, you'll hear them talk about what a learning experience it was and how grateful they are to have gone through it and learned those lessons as they continue their championship quests on their new teams. But as for the Nets themselves, the team that got left behind worse for wear, like a duplex in the path of a tornado, did they get any consolation? Nope. Better luck next time.